Lanolin, the wonder of the wool world. Today we're going to talk about what it is and how you can relanolize your wool projects. Lanolin is a wonder product with tons of uses. It can be used to protect and heal dry skin. Sometimes it is used to help waterproof cloth diapers. And in fact, nursing mothers will use it to help soothe sore nipples. So, what exactly is lanolin? Lanolin is sheep grease. You heard me right, sheep grease. Specifically, it's a waxy grease that's produced by the sheep's skin. As the wool grows in, it becomes coated in this grease, which is both water resistant and antimicrobial. It's these same qualities that make it perfect for our uses too. In many textile traditions, wool is spun in the grease or unwashed with the lanolin still in it, then used to produce water resistant garments. Over time, as these garments are worn, Lanolin can be washed out of the textile. The good news for us is that it can be added back in again. I'm going to give you a quick overview of how to lanolize wool, and then we'll dig into the science behind it. Begin by soaking your textile overnight in warm water. I'm using a small bin for my sample, but this can be accomplished in a sink or tub, or even a top-loading washing machine without the agitator. Next, you're gonna need some lanolin. I've got Now Foods brand lanolin here, but any 100% lanolin product will work. You only want one to 2% by weight of lanolin. Less is definitely more here. For about a pound of fabric, I'll use about half a teaspoon to a full teaspoon of lanolin. That's it. For itty bitty textiles like what I'm working with, I like to measure it out using a kitchen scale. Our next task is to heat the lanolin. I'm using a burner here, but really the hottest temperature tap water from your sink or bathtub will be warm enough to melt the lanolin. Remember that you never want to boil your woolens. Wool plus water plus agitation equals felt. Now here's the trick to lanolizing. Oil and water don't mix. You'll need to emulsify the mixture. Mix it aggressively and use it quickly. A whisk works well for this. You'll want to add your textile to the mixture, not the other way around. This will help get an even distribution of the lanolin throughout the textile. Again, try not to agitate the wool in the water. Set it aside and allow it to fully cool before you remove it. Once you remove it, gently press any excess liquid out and then you can lay it flat to dry. Boom, it's lanolized. Now, I've gotten a lot of questions through the years about the hows and the whys of lanolizing. I'm gonna throw a little bit of science at you. How much lanolin is enough and how much lanolin is too much? I knit some sample squares to figure it out. In this experiment, we compared four samples, 10%, 5%, 2% by weight, and a control sample with no lanolin. I weighed each sample to make sure they were about the same weight for accurate comparison. Then these samples were soaked overnight in the same container with water and a little bit of Synthropol. In this case, Synthropol simply helps the water penetrate the textile. The next day, I weighed out our lanolin for each sample. I placed the spoon on the scale and zeroed it out. This allowed me to accurately measure how much lanolin was on my spoon. Each of my samples was between 16 and 17 grams by dry weight. For our 10% sample, this means that we would need between 1.6 and 1.7 grams. 
I then repeated this process for each of my four samples, following the steps described earlier in the video. I soaked and rinsed our control square so that its treatment was consistent with the other samples. Then I laid them flat and waited for them to dry. After they were dry, I ran them through a couple of different tests, looking at how greasy they were and how water resistant they were. Our first sample is our control sample, which has no lanolin in it. Our first test is a simple touch and visual inspection. For our control sample, the colors are bright and the square is very clean. When I touch it, there's no residue that comes off on my hands. And that's a good sign since we didn't add anything to this sample. Next, let's test how water resistant it is. Here's a secret. With or without lanolin, wool has water resistant qualities. Notice how the water beads up on the surface of the fabric. This is due to a combination of water surface tension and the microscopic structure of the wool. Microscopic scales on the wool act like roofing tiles and encourage the water to roll off. Once you break the surface tension, the water slips between the scales and the textile absorbs it. For our third test, we'll use oil absorbing sheets to show how much of the lanolin comes off of each sample. As you can see with my control sample, when I rub it several times across the oil absorbing sheet, the sheet comes away clean. There's no lanolin on the sheet. Surprise! Next, we're gonna look at our 2% sample. This sample had about a third of a gram of lanolin added to it. As you can see visually, it looks almost identical to our control sample. It does have a slightly different hand feel from our control sample, but there's not really any residue that's coming off on my hands. Like with our control sample, the water beads up on the surface of the fabric. The main difference with our 2% sample is that more water can be applied before the surface tension breaks on its own. Water will beat up and roll off the surface much better than on just the woolen sample. For our oil sheets, I was actually a little bit surprised. I expected some of the lanolin to come off when I rubbed it on the oil sheet, but honestly, the sheet came out looking almost as clean as our first sheet. Even when I hold the sheet up to the light, you can see there's almost nothing there. By contrast, our third sample, we finally start to see some differences. You may be able to see, but there are some lighter off-color areas in our 5% sample that aren't in our control sample. I can also really feel the greasiness in this sample. 5% lanolin for these samples is just shy of one gram and it is very sticky. As far as water resistance goes, I mean, what do you expect me to say? Of course it's water resistant. Look at that water beat up. For the oil sheet test, we finally get some results. After rubbing the sample across the sheet several times, it becomes clear that some of the lanolin is being picked up by the sheet. What this tells me is that 5% by weight lanolin is too much lanolin. All right, prepare yourself. 10% lanolin, yuck. If you look closely, you can see that the sample couldn't even absorb all of the lanolin. Some of it is just sitting on top of the surface and so much lanolin is coming off on my hands as I stretch this. My hands could use a moisturizer, but come on. I'm sure someone out there has a great use for a textile with this much lanolin in it, but I'm not that person. As expected, the textile is extremely water resistant. As an oil, lanolin is water repellent, so of course more lanolin means more water resistance. However, as I said, by 10%, the wool has absorbed as much lanolin as it can. With our oil sheet test, you can see that a considerable amount of lanolin comes off of our sample. 
As I did this test, my hands were completely coated in lanolin. This is why I say less is more. One to 2% of lanolin can bring some awesome qualities to your textiles, but any more than that, and it will bring some additional qualities that you may not be looking for. All right, friends, if you found this video helpful, please do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. That way you catch all of the cool videos that we put out. And you know, a thumbs up for the video would be pretty cool too.